I'm Jason Stipp from Morningstar. Investors are often inundated with all sorts of paperwork, and they're often left wondering what they should keep on hand, what they should store away, and what they can even shred. Well, today, Morningstar's Christine Benz, Director of Personal Finance, has ideas about three types of documents that pre-retirees and retirees just cannot do without. These are essential documents for them. She's here to tell us a little bit about that. Thanks for joining me, Christine. Jason, good to be here. So the first type of document um, that you're going to outline is actually something that everyone can benefit from, um, but it has some specific applications for people nearing retirement in retirement. Tell us a little bit about number right. one. So this is an investment policy statement. And I think there are two key benefits to having one of these. And you're right, everyone needs one. Um, the first is that it helps enforce discipline as you craft your investment plan. So you will specify your asset allocation. You'll specify what you're looking for in individual investments, how often you'll check up on them, and so forth. So it helps instill discipline as you put together your plan. But to me, it also helps enforce discipline as you go along and as you monitor. And I think the, the beauty of it is if you've taken time to craft an investment policy statement, you'll be a lot less likely to override it because your gut is telling you that you want to sell or, or make some changes. You'll have to check that policy statement, hopefully, and see, is this a good move? Is this the right move for me? So certainly a good compass in very volatile times. Right. So what would you say is would be specific about a retiree's investment policy statement, how might it be different? What might it include um, that's different from maybe a younger person's? Well, a couple of key things. First of all, the asset allocation would probably be more of a moving target. So the person would, uh, the retired person would very likely be wanting to tip more and more into safe investments as they're drawing on that portfolio for income needs. And second, I would say uh, the withdrawal rate, specifying that withdrawal rate, your spending rate in that investment policy statement is a key uh, consideration. And the other uh, benefit of that is it ensures that you have thoroughly thought out what is an appropriate spending rate for me. Um, and giving some thought to that is obviously key in whether you make your nest egg last throughout your lifetime. So the second important document type uh, is important for you, but also important for your family and, the, and your loved ones. Tell us a little bit about number two. Well, this is what I call a master directory, Jason. And essentially, this is just a document that delineates what your accounts are, account numbers, key facts, URLs, passwords, key individuals, and phone numbers. Um, and so it specifies all of your accounts and some information about them. In case something should happen to you, a loved one would be able to put their hands on this document and find out what you had going on financially. So obviously a lot of sensitive information on this document. How can you make sure that it's secure and that it doesn't fall into the wrong hands? You're right. This is, this is something that you absolutely must keep safe. So if it's an electronic document, you want to password protect it and uh, make sure that someone knows how to tap into it if they need to. If it's a physical document, you want to keep it under lock and key. And you do also want to alert some loved one of this document's existence and, and how to get it if they need to. OK. The third uh, document type is actually a suite of of documents, um, several documents involving your estate plan. Can you outline what those major documents are and the important role they play? Right. And, and these are documents that I would say everyone needs. So first of all would be the last will and testament that's essentially specifying how you would like your assets dispersed when you are no longer here. Um, also a living will that gets into your feelings on um, end of life care. So if you are terminally ill and unable to make decisions for yourself, it lays out your thoughts regarding how uh, far you would like your medical provider to go to save your life. Um, and then second, the medical, uh, sorry, third, medical power of attorney would lay out who you would like to make those decisions for you on your behalf if you do become incapacitated, so medical decisions. Okay. Um, and then finan financial power of attorney, you're often called durable power of attorney, that lays out who you would like to make financial decisions on your behalf. Sure. So the living will maybe could inform your medical power of attorney uh, on the kind of decision making process for your medical needs if you happen to be incapacitated. Right. So uh, that's a great point, Jason. You want to alert the people you've selected to be your agents for uh, medical and financial power of attorney. Alert them that they are your agents and also give them your thoughts on um, some of these issues. So if you have thoughts about end of life care or your financial assets, share that information with them and share your feelings with them while you still can. So they can make the decisions that you would make if you exactly. were able to. Christine, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Jason. For Morningstar, I'm Jason Stipp. Thanks for watching.